Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video newsletter, well we're going to answer a comment that someone's dropped on one of my videos. It's about capability studies, CPK, PPK. It's a question from Ravi and Ravi's asked a specific question about when to sample for long-term capability. So we're going to answer that question in a moment for you Ravi. First before we move on to that, just a reminder folks, my book Drink Tea and Read the Paper for all the Six Sigma professionals out there. If you want a book which is about the practical application of Six Sigma, not passing the test, the practical application of Six Sigma and making your employer piles and piles of money, it's all in here. If you like the videos, there is much more than what's on the videos in this book. Drink tea and read the paper. You can get it from lulu.com. You can get the hard copy. You can also get an electronic download if you wish to get it that way. But please go and buy the book. Drink tea and read the paper. There's so much good stuff in there. So Ravi, let's answer your question now. <clears throat> Which is... I think you say how to sample, I guess uh, the question really is when to sample. How to sample for PP, PPK, effectively what we're talking about here, of course is long term, it's the long term capability. And to be honest, thinking this through before you start is a really good thing to do. So I'm, I'm going to take you through a few steps here, take you through my thought process about how I create CP, CPK, PP, PPK results. So the first thing I'm going to do, so we're, if we're talking a Six Sigma project, the first capability study I get my clients to do. I get my green belts and my black belts to do and this is the first thing that I would do is this. I collect 30 samples. Uh, they are 30 samples straight off the machine. So in other words 30 samples consecutive, can't spell it, 30 samples consecutive, I just catch 30 bits coming out of the th out of the machine. I make sure that during the 30 production, I take my hands off. So this is 30 pieces, hands off, and I work out the capability. Okay, so that's the first thing I will do. Now why do I do this? Because 30 consecutive, the, va the only variability that's in the 30 consecutive is the natural variability that's in the machine. Now some people call this, they actually call it the machine capability, and I've seen it called CMK, yeah, so it's the machine capability. So what this is basically saying is, if all the other controls were put in place, all the external variables, the material coming in was identical. The maintenance to the machine was brilliant. All the spare parts were exactly as needed. So in other words, no extraneous variability whatsoever. Is this machine on its own capable of doing the job? So I always do 30 consecutive. And if you just take a quick look at this graph here, Here's one from a client of mine. He's done actually done 40 consecutive pieces. You can see the top and the bottom tolerance, and you can see actually that he's got a problem that looks very similar to this. So because he's done 30 consecutive, he already knows that the machine isn't capable. So he's gonna get, have to get on the machine, and he's gonna have to do something to the machine. You know, maybe we're gonna have to take a look. New bearings are gonna be have to put in place. New pieces are going to have to be made. Maybe, maybe we're going to have to screw the bed down a little bit better. Maybe we're going to have to replace the feed screw. This kind of thing. We're going to have to do something to the machine. So that's the first thing that I do. 
is 30 consecutive samples. Okay. Now we come to your question, which is about the long term. How, when do you collect the data? Over what period? Okay. So let's think about this. So we we have a time frame, which we are going to call long term. And that's where we are going to calculate the PPK from. And the question is, how big is this time frame going to be? Well, here's the way that I would, I, I think about capturing my capability, whether I call it CPK or PPK, because um, the PPK uses the, um, the big, calculation here for standard deviation the PPK is using this calculation for Sigma so standard deviation in this case is calculated using the big fat uh, long hand standard deviation calculation but what Ravi's interested in how, how, over what period did I collect the data now this is going to be different for different processes so the period, what do you want to what do you want to see? I want to try and capture I want to try and capture all the variables. That's that's the way I think about it. In what time frame will all the variables appear in the data? And that's the way I decide what the time frame is going to be. Now, this could be very short. You could decide that in 15 minutes, all the variables appear in your process in 15 minutes. Maybe the temperature of an oven is swinging up and down in this period. You're making so many pieces. Yeah, it's such a high volume that you're changing batches of material, boxes of material are going through the machine. And in a 15 minute window, bang, everything you need to see is going to appear in that 15 minute window. In which case, that's, that's how long I'd collect the data over. Now this would be really high volume, this would be a high volume thing, so I'm, I'm still only going to collect, so I'm still only going to collect maybe 30, maybe 50. But if, if in 15 minutes, we made 3,000 bits in 15 minutes, I'm going to randomly sample through that 15 minutes to see what the hell's going on. Now it could be that all the variables don't appear in 15 minutes. Maybe they appear over 15 days. So maybe there are batches of material that only get changed every two or three days. Maybe there's maintenance routines, filters that get blocked and get cleaned, new fluids that get put in there, recharging of strengths. You're changing the acid and the acid gets topped up once a week. So, you know, in a 15 day period, you would only see the acid being topped up twice in that period, but that might be enough. So this is really how you decide, how long do I collect the data over? You're constantly trying to think practically. You're, you're not trying to think mathematically necessarily. And this is the same for all Six Sigma. You should try and think practically always. Why am I collecting this data? What am I trying to see? So for instance, the 30 consecutive, I'm trying to see the machine capability. Do I need to do some work to the machine? Then here, I'm trying to capture all the variables. And practically, you can ask the technicians, over oh, what period do you think all the variables kick in? And they might say, oh, well, batches of material only change every six days. Uh, maintenance routines are done once a month, etc., etc. And you start to think, oh, okay, we need to capture some data over a, over a reasonable long period in that case. Okay, so... So that's how I'm doing it. I'm doing a machine capability, I'm doing a long-term capability. And these are the two techniques I typically use. And I'm really thinking about this period. This period I, I, I think about a lot, 
and I make sure that I get this data collection period to capture all the variables. So I'm thinking practically, I'm not thinking mathematically about what calc I use, I am thinking practically about what the, what the data is telling me, what the process is trying to communicate to me, and I make sure that the, the machine gets enough time to communicate to me. Really important. So Ravi, hope that answers your question. If anybody else would like to ask a question and I can answer it via a video, please drop me some comments, that would be great. Ravi, if you like the video, please give me a Please give me a like, give me a thumbs up, let's beat the, beat the Google algorithm. Everybody else, if this has been helpful to you folks, give me, a, give me a thumbs up because that helps with the channel, helps other people to see this information. And if there's anything else I can help you with, please drop me a line and I look forward to hearing from you all soon.